All right, upgrade time. Honda Pioneer shocks. So I've done a lot of research, did a lot of studying in the Facebook groups, and I found that the 814s is what everybody recommends. I'd love to get these 814s, okay? But that price. So I started doing more research. Eventually I narrowed it down to these 814s and foxes i've had foxes on several machines in the past and they seem to hold up well but that price again and that's just for two i mean i did find options a little cheaper but that's almost it's as expensive as those 814s which i'm sure both would be great so then you know I started looking at the cheaper stuff and these guys are supposed to be really good I've seen a lot of people post and say that they're very satisfied with the adjustable suspension from rough country what are they called the M ones but then I saw these guys right here the vertex shocks and what just sold me on it was this right here a firm you know, I'm broke, so I got 18 months, 0% interest on $1,300. It's like $75 a month. I can do that. Cut back Taco Bell and afford these. So I clicked order Sunday night, about 9 p.m., and here they are. Oh, my God. 7 p.m. Tuesday. I don't know if 814s would be here that fast, but... uh I sure as crap no foxes wouldn't be here that fast. Let's put them on, see how they do. Let me show you the packaging real quick. It arrived in a very well packaged box. Doesn't look like any movement would occur if someone dropped them. And it came with the tool. Here's a side by side comparison of the front and rear shocks. You can tell the difference by the longer neck up top of the rear shock and the logos facing outwards on the rear shock very heavy duty and here's a comparison of a front rough country and a front factory shock very different here the factory shocks are much heavier the spring rate I guess is about the same it looks like it's a 300 pound spring rate I'm I don't know much about the spring rates, to be honest. I forgot to do a comparison of the rear shocks, so it was much later in the evening. This whole job took about three hours, which isn't bad for a novice like me using mostly hand tools. Now I'm just showing the preload. I've got it down some. I'm going to adjust it some more. I'm going to put two inches in the front and one and a quarter preload in the back. And this is just showing how you adjust the preload. It's much, much easier to do it before you put it on the side by side. So you got the smaller locking ring. And then you got the main ring, the one that you adjust. So I'm going to put two inches on the front shocks of preload and an inch and a quarter on the rear. All right. So the bolts that hold it to the A arms and the frame, they're 17 millimeter bolts. You can do this with hand tools, they are quite tight. So I did get a ratcheting wrench and an impact. It helped out a lot, but you can't fit the impact up there to get it off the frame. So that's where I use this cheater bar. Cheater bar came in real handy. And honestly, it's much easier just to use two sockets instead of a wrench the whole time. Because once you get to the rear, it's really hard to get that wrench up in there unless you open up the bed. I didn't do that. I left the bed down. 
All right, you want to be real careful with these bearings. They could fall out, and then little seal there could fall out. Adjusting the preload messes up the angles of the shocks, but it's easy just to shove the bottom end in the A-arm and then use leverage and twist it back right. Once you've got the shocks oriented again, take the bottom end back out and put the top end in first. It's much easier that way. You're gonna have to put that camera down now. Line it back up and give it a little tap. Wait until you've got the top and bottom end before you start tightening stuff down. And then you want to break out your cheater bar, make sure it's nice and tight. All right, back here on the rear shocks, there's hardly any clearance. It might have been easier if I opened up the bed and came from the top, but I didn't want to do that. I had the rear end jacked up and I had to been nine foot tall to reach over in there or get my step stool. I figured this would be the safest way to do it right here. And as you can see, that wrench doesn't fit, so that's why you need two sockets. All right, now for the part all 20 of my viewers came here to see, the side-by-side -side comparison. As you can see, the vertex did lift it up just a little bit, but that's only because I adjusted the preload. You can keep it about stock height if you want. And if you hadn't noticed already, this Pioneer already has a long travel kit installed on it by Texas Tough Customs. I highly recommend that company, by the way. The long travel kit did increase ride quality tenfold I would say but adding these vertex shocks I would say it easily doubled the already improved ride quality messed with the dampening that much but I did about three from the softest and then we took it for a ride at Indian Mountain which is in Piedmont Alabama I'm gonna wrap up this video and let you guys just watch the exterior view and we're gonna do a climb up God's path on Indian Mountain which is a really hard three diamond expert path which the pioneer made it up with ease all right, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, just put them in the comments and I'll try to respond as soon as I can. I'm just gonna let this video play out just a little bit more and I'll upload the entire ride at Indian Mountain, which is a fun park if you're into that expert kind of stuff.